Good afternoon, everyone. Um, in an effort to curb recent violence in the city's northeast, a lengthy investigation was launched into a fencing of stolen property where weapons and household items, ranging from tools to sunglasses, were involved in the trade for drugs. The arrests of three people in connection with this operation, as well as a seizure of more than 200 weapons as part of an ongoing commitment by the Calgary Police Service to target violent criminal offenders and stem criminal activity in the area. On August 2015, 2015, District 5 operations team entered into an investigation following suspicious activities in a home in the 0 to 100 block of Pine Lore Place Northeast. Following an extensive investigation, we executed a search warrant on the home Thursday, October 1st, 2015, and found a large amount of stolen property, cash, drugs, and multiple weapons. Some of the items seized included four modified shotguns, two loaded at the time with various ammunition being seized, over 20 replica handguns, four compound bows, one crossbow, and 194 edged weapons ranging from sharpened swords to throwing stars and knives. Approximately $50,000 worth of stolen property was located within that residence, as well as an amount of marijuana and cocaine. It is believed this location was being used as a fence house where stolen property was being traded for the narcotics, mainly the cocaine and the marijuana. Due to a large volume of stolen items, it took several days for our officers to categorize and inventory the property. What you see before you is some of the nine pallets and a five-ton cube van of property that was removed from the residence. Charged in connection with this file are Tanner Ray Lang, 32, Jan Ann August, 24, Mark Lee Gardner, 41, and each of these people faces multiple property, drugs, and weapons-related offenses. We have begun the arduous task of trying to, again, inventory and return all this property to the rightful owners. And we have further charges pending on the three accused. There, there's weapons. What I can say is it, it may be attributable to the world we live in. And by that, what I'm saying is you see games of World of Warcraft, you see video games on TV, you see video games on computer, all kinds of, of these types of uh, scientific, sci-fi type things, um, and they're gaining some popularity. Have I seen this many in one location? No, I haven't. Has it happened in the city? Yes, it has. There's four real firearms. They're all the ones that are located in the boxes. The other ones are uh, replica handguns. But as you can see, and by you asking me that question, it's almost impossible to tell which ones are real or not. So when you start looking at having those types of weapons out in the public, from a public and officer safety perspective, we have some great concerns with those types of weapons being out in the public. So if you had a crazy weapon, you'd go to this house to get drugs. Correct. Yeah, Correct. Uh, you take it there, you trade it. It was, a, it was a barter system, basically. You trade it. The problem with that is uh, likely if I wanted that crazy weapon, I could probably go to that house and uh, purchase it for either drugs or cash as well. So there's kind of a, almost a network of uh, give and take from that particular residence. So where would this stuff have ended up? Like, well, it's tough to say. I mean, this, this is likely could have ended up in all kinds of places around the city, around the, around the province, around the country. Um, when you look at weapons like this, if you're out in the public with it, there's only one reason. You're trying to show somebody you have a weapon. You're trying to prove something to somebody. You're trying to coerce somebody. You're potentially uh, committing robberies, home invasions. Who knows what the weapons are actually going to be used for? But because they look so realistic, you're going to gain a lot of compliance, and that's really concerning to us. When you factor in the drugs on top of this and the mental state of the people on drugs, uh, the volatility of those situations just escalates to the point that uh, we have great concern. Yeah, we're very, we're very early in, into the investigation, still trying to piece everything together, but there's nothing that says this is directly related back to any of the organized crime or, or gang violence that's up in that area. Um, as we progress through this, everything that we do find will be turned over to the other units of the service that are actively investigating those types of things to see if there's anything of benefit to them. Do you wear any robberies where people are showing up with a sword? 
Um, not offhand, I'm not. Uh, have I seen it in my time? Yes, I have. Um, but again, it, it, you know, when you hear about home invasions, that's more likely where something like that might happen. Uh, it's usually a pretty good clue if I walk through the front door of a business carrying a sword that that's not going to be really good for somebody inside. So they don't do that. They tend to be more discreet. But if you're talking about home invasions where you might be running down alleys, jumping out of cars into houses where there's a less opportunity, it's more of a surprise, um, they could be utilized in that type of stuff. So this is a residential area. What, uh, what is the risk to the people who live next door or across the street? Well, I mean, it's a substantial risk. Um, we've had a number of home invasions over the last five to ten years in Calgary related back to the drug trade. So there's potential of hitting the wrong house. Uh, people coming to rip off this stuff from the people who lived here but hit the house beside it. That can happen. Uh, the fact that there's weapons here, if uh, the criminals believe these are real weapons and they want them, they're coming with real weapons. So there's a, a potential for danger there. Uh, and as you can imagine, the uh, citizens in that area, anytime you see this kind of traffic, this kind of weapons coming out of there, they had concerns for themselves as well. So um, we're very happy to get this amount of uh, weapons off the street and uh, into our hands. How did you find out about this? Uh, originally, uh, it came across uh, in twofold, kind of, uh, it was a result of another investigation and a Crime Stoppers tip. So uh, in moving forward with that material and that information, our district operations team uh, conducted an operation on it and uh, got to the point where they were able to execute the search warrant. How common are these types of encounters now? Uh, they're out there. there. There's a number of them around. It's a matter of finding them. And as you can imagine, it's a very transient population. Most of these people aren't the owners of these residents, so they'll go in and rent a place for a while. We uh, find them, shut them down, put pressure on them. They move to somewhere else and start all over again. So there's a number of them out there. Um, we do what we can to find them and try and uh, action the material as fast as we can because this kind of stuff can be very quickly moved. And if we don't action uh, the investigation in a timely fashion, we can lose some of the stuff that we're looking at today. Are you confident that the three being charged now are it? Is it in regards to this particular? No, uh, that's still going on. At this point in time, they're the three that have been charged. There's still. Um, Investigation continue to see if there's going to be more or others, uh, but there's nothing leading us to say that there definitely will be anybody else. Were they actually living in the house? They were, the three people were occupants and living within that residence. You mentioned in your statement you'd like to see this property get back into the hands of its rightful owners. I can see a guy with a healthy gun or a bike coming forward and saying that's mine, but do you, do you, do you uh, like the odds of the guy who owns the Freddy Krueger co-op come forward? No, uh, I, I don't think that'll likely happen. But um, again, we're taking at it strictly from a visual perspective here. Um, some of these things may have a more intrinsic or personal value to some of these people. Uh, some of these swords could have been an antique, could have been passed on, could be heritage items or something like that. So we may get some of the people asking for that stuff, but when you're talking specifically about that, that one piece, I, I suspect I'd love to talk to the person involved that had it if they want to come forward, but I don't think it'll happen. What's an officer's reaction? Well, yeah, I mean, this is, this is obviously a big concern to our officers, um, but it's something that the officers in Calgary in general see bits and pieces of this on a daily basis. We stop vehicles all the time with this stuff in. We go enter houses a lot of times with this stuff in. So nothing in particular, I'm sure, really shocked them, but the, the, the vastness of what we've got out in front of us, and like I said, there's nine pallets of what we see here. This is just a small, small piece. Um, it was a little bit uh, shocking at the end to, to see that much material. Are these people known to you? Uh, they are now. Um, <laughs> you know what? Um, we will be following them through the court system and then see what we've got. Uh, we will uh, definitely be looking at it. As far as anything that I would say they were hugely involved with police before, no, there's nothing to say that they had a huge, huge record of any kind.